Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. God bless you all. I am glad to see you. I'm going to pray for you this morning. I am going to encourage your faith. I'm going to share a word from the Lord. Um, so <clears throat> this morning I woke up with a bit of a headache because my neck was, um, I must have laid on it wrong or something last night. So I'm um, a little disheveled. That's the, what you call the word. <laughs> so I'm just going to pray. I'm going to pray while some people are hopping on and you guys let me know where you're watching from. Share this, tag some people and, um, let's see, I am going to pray and you guys say hello to me. Drop a heart. Say hi. Good morning. How you doing? You're going to have a good day today. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord God, I just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you for the opportunity to pray for your people, to encourage your people. Lord, I pray in Jesus' mighty name, that you will lead us into all peace and joy. Hold on. Let me try something real quick. Let me see. I just discovered this, and I had so much fun with it with my son last night. And so, I'm going to see. I'm going to see here. Okay. It's not the same with the Facebook Live, but I... Let me see what this does. No, 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> Have you guys discovered this yet? I was going to see if I could pray on fire. I don't think that's the right one. Okay. Okay, I'll turn it off. <laughs> I was on the phone with my son last night on, on uh, Facebook um, Messenger video, and we had so much fun. Did you guys know that there are these filters that you can do these videos with? And I mean, they are so much fun. I've never done a filter in my life. I found out last night in the uh, in, my, in the class that I teach here that a lot of people put filters on when they do <laughs> their videos right off. So I, I probably could use some of that. But okay, I apologize. Lord God, I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would just come and fill our hearts and fill our homes and fill our life with joy and peace as we put our hope in you, as we put our faith in you. Lord God, I pray that you would separate us from our fear of man, from our opinions that blind us or block us from moving forward or that steal our joy or that squeeze out our peace. Lord God, we just mindfully come to you this morning and we cast our care on you, knowing that you care for us. Lord, you are a good God. You have good plans for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Lord God, I pray for everybody who is languishing in regret, who is um, bound by fear, who is uh, feeling worried and anxious, Lord God. We, we just, by an act of our will, we cast our care on you. We lean on you. We acknowledge you in all of our ways. We rely on you. We cling to you, God. We we draw our strength from you. We draw our joy from you. We draw everything that we need out of your, your um, spirit this morning, God. We just want to be filled with your presence. We want to be aware of your glory. We want to be aware of how you are moving in our lives today. I'm sorry I'm holding this, but this is just a morning that I'm holding it. So <laughs> what are you guys up to this morning? Are you guys share this, tag some people, say hello. Hello, Amber, Deidre, Amber, uh, Victoria, Victorious. Oh, hey, <laughs> Claire, Ashley. Um, how is your daughter? How is, um, hey, Pearl watching for the first time from South Africa. Okay. Lord God, I'm just going to pray for people's faith this morning. I'm going to pray for an extra measure of faith to come upon us. How many of you guys know that one day can change everything? Good morning, Connie. Good morning, Ellen. One day can change everything. And so I'm just prophesying over your life that God has a day in store for you where what you are waiting to change will change. What you are waiting to end will end. What you are waiting to have started will start. There are, all of our days are written in his book. And, and we don't have to worry when. We don't have to be 
wondering, when is God going to do something? How is he going to do it? And a lot of people are afraid they've made too many mistakes or they've ruined their chances. And the Lord says he has new, his mercies are new every day. His mercies are new every single day. His mercies are new every day. Let me just say this again. It doesn't matter the mistakes that we have made in the past. God will work it out for our good if we will trust him. I know that it is hard when you are, are thinking, oh, I wish I had done this differently, or I wish I had said this differently, or I wish I had, you know, hung on to this relationship, or not ruined this relationship, or not done this, or not done that. And the Lord is saying, I want to free you from regret this morning, because he, has me he is meeting us where we are, and he is taking us to where he has in mind to take us. And there's nothing from the past that God cannot redeem. God is a redeemer, and whatever we hand over to him, whatever we entrust to him, he is going to redeem it. He is going to teach us from those mistakes, and we don't have to fear that we have blown it to the point that God is not going to be able to bring restoration in our lives, that he is not going to be able to help us from where we are to get to where we are going. And actually... God is so sovereign and he is so big and he is so loving and he is so powerful that he can actually take the very mistakes, the very, and I'm preaching to myself with this, the, the, even when we did something fearfully and it may have messed things up or slowed things down, we think it slowed things down. The Lord is saying, I already had all that planned. I already knew what you were going to do, and I already planned around it to make sure that you were going to have the best life I had in mind for you. And so I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, that people would be freed from regret, that people would be freed from believing that they missed the train, that they have missed their chance to be used by God in a mighty way. And I don't care how old you are. The Lord has good things for your life. The Lord still wants to use you. He still wants to bless you. He still wants to make himself known to you in new ways. And the Lord is saying, I want you this morning to ask me for more of myself to begin to ask me for more of myself because a lot of times we're asking for more of this and more of that and more of something else and God do this and God do that. And he's like, just ask me for more of me and all of the things that you are desiring will come as well. The Bible, you know, the verse, you know, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things are going to be added as well. Good morning, Leslie. I see you all. I'm happy to see you this morning and I am believing that we are going to press in with prayer. I'm praying. I am praying. Good morning. Good morning. I'm excited about your wedding in four days. Diana, she's a partner of mine. She's getting married. I pray blessings over your wedding. I pray the peace of God that passes all understanding to go throughout that day and for everything to go off without a hitch and it to be everything that your hearts desires. So, Lord God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus for everybody who's been waiting for their husband, Lord God. One day you will meet them. This is the thing about waiting for your husband, and it's just coming up in my spirit with this one day message. I'm telling you, you'll be single. And you'll be single, and you'll be single, and you think it's never going to happen. And then one day, in one day, you will meet that person. Now, the relationship will take a minute to develop, but in one day, you will meet the person. You will go from not knowing them to knowing them in one day, and it will happen. And it's going to be worth the wait. And so I pray for everybody who is waiting on the right people in their life. And for everybody who is lamenting, the time lost or the people that have left. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, just not just a band-aid over that, but the Lord would just take that hole in your heart and just fill it. I see like a a hole in people's heart and the, the Lord would just fill it with his presence and fill it fill us with his peace. Um one one of my favorite well, she used to be one of my favorite writers. Um her name is Anne Lamont. I don't know that she's particularly, I don't really read her anymore. She's quite liberal, but not my cup of tea politically. And that's kind of bled over into her writings. But she's a really good writer. And she was single forever. 
and she's now married, and I was seeing her post where she's like, I mean, yeah, she was 60 in her 60s before she got married, but now granted, I think that she had not been waiting like the way that God had expected her to wait, and so she might have prolonged her wait. So I pray y'all who are waiting for a husband, don't prolong your wait. If you're in the wrong relationship with the person who's not who God has for you, get out. If you know it's not God, get out because you could prolong what God has for you. And don't think, well, I've blown it. I've already lived with somebody. I've already, you know, slept with this person. Move forward in the Lord, trusting in his hand, trusting in his heart, trusting in his sovereignty, trusting in his goodness. Lord, we trust you. We want to trust you. We believe, help our unbelief. We want to trust you with our whole heart. We want to live wide open, fearlessly, fearlessly, not with a plan B, like if God doesn't come through for me, well, I guess I'll, I know how I can figure this out to do it my way. Lord God, I pray that we would have tenacious faith, that we would not give up and grow weary and doing the right thing, that we would not settle in with mediocrity, but that we would press for excellence, that we would press for the very best that God has for us, that we would trust that God is doing beautiful things in our lives through the trials, through the pain, through the disappointment, through the waiting. I pray, God, so diligently for my own life and for the life of everybody who is wait, waiting and watching right now. Lord God, I pray so diligently that we wouldn't miss the beauty in this day, the purpose in this day, the power in this day, the grace in this day, that we would not miss enjoying you today, Lord God, that we would not miss partnering with you today in what it is that you have for us. Every single day, you might be a young mom or an older mom like me, and you're just with your children most of the day, and, you know, the days kind of run into together, but we are sowing wonderful seed into these children. Wherever you are at your job, you are sowing wonderful seed. And if you continue to sow in the places where God has planted you, he will, he will give you a more spacious place as we're good stewards. I was talking about this last night. As we are good stewards, where we are, the Lord is going to in, bring increase. He is going to bring, um, New assignments, every assignment that he brings us, every blessing that he brings us, there is work behind it. All of God's blessings are work. So if we just, whatever our hands find to do, if we work at it with all of our hearts heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man, we can have a blessed day today in the midst of waiting for a spouse to change and uh, in the midst of waiting for a job upgrade or for the phone call for the job and I pray, Lord, that you would give us just a Lord God, I pray that you would give us such a sensitivity to your promptings, to your presence. Lord, that you would help us to walk by faith and not by fear. That you would help us when we hit a snag, when we hit a fear, when we want to turn back, when we want to turn away, when we, listen, God is challenging us. As you walk by the Spirit, prepare to be challenged because God is stretching us because he is increasing our capacity to receive from him. Because don't you know, God has an overflowing abundance and, and riches in the heavenly places that he wants to pour out over us. And why are some of the people walking in it and others aren't? It's a matter of our capacity to receive from him. And as, you know, there's parables about capacity. There's parables about stewardship. And, and, and as we steward well what we've been given, and we all have been given a measure of faith, the Bible talks about a measure of faith. So every single one of us has a measure of faith. So we need to be careful to use the measure of faith we have where we are and believe the Lord for an increased measure of faith so we can believe for greater things because you know we receive from heaven by our faith. So yes, we might not have the faith to believe our debts are going to be paid off and, you know, 
you might be believing your debts will be paid off in 15 years, you know. And as you're faithful in your finances, as you're faithful in giving, as you're faithful in your prayer life, God will increase your faith and your capacity. And then all of a sudden you're like, hey, my debts are going to be paid off this year, you know. And you have the faith for it. And then God gives you the, the game plan for it or whatever whatever it is. Um, it might be a relation, relational thing or a ministry thing or, you know, other other goals and visions and abilities even to use our gifts. I'm praying the Lord increase my faith in the um in the healing gift. You guys know my my legs have been injured and la yesterday I walked probably faster than I've ever walked in the last f since I've been injured like in September and longer and I walked uphill and I kept a pace and last night as I was laying in bed my leg was just burning on fire and I asked my husband please pray for me he reached over he put his hand on my leg he prayed for me and it instantly stopped hurting it instantly stopped hurting and I received that right then and there but you know what I've had that happen with him a couple of times and my leg ends up still hurting the next time I walk or it's still a little bit achy like this morning and so I'm praying, God, increase my faith to receive the full healing, the total healing. If you can heal the pain in my leg so I can go to sleep, why not just let's just heal the whole leg? And I know it's coming. I know that it is coming. And and if we can pray for a headache to be healed, why not be asking the Lord to increase our faith? But the thing is, if you have prayed for a headache to be healed, if you prayed for a leg to be healed, um, the pain to go away, a cold to leave, a cough to stop, and you've seen God move, and you never pray for anybody else to be healed, I know from from experience and from um, listening to the testimony of other people who are walking in healing anointing, that you continue to pray for people's healing when you're given an opportunity, whether they receive it or not. When we step out in faith, and I think that's what slows us down. That's a good example. Is we prayed? I prayed for blind eyes to be open, and I have I have felt like I remember really feeling like the person that I was so believing the Lord that her eyes were going to be healed. And I fasted for her and, and said, "Your eyes are going to be healed," and they weren't. And she was disappointed and she was hurt. And I'm like, I don't want to do that to somebody again, <laughs> you know. And so, like, I've been a little bit nervous of stepping out and praying for somebody's eyes to be healed, but I have prayed for other people's eyes to be open. But you know what? I've heard testimony after testimony of people who prayed for somebody and they didn't get healed, prayed for somebody they didn't heal, prayed for somebody they didn't heal. I mean, this is the way it is in business. This is the way it is in relationships. This is the way it is in, in making and breaking habits. We try, we fall, we get back up. We try, we fall, we get back up. We try, we fall. But can you imagine if a little kid fell 20 times while they were trying to walk and then just decided, I'm never going to try this again and just lay down and said, I can't walk. And I feel like that's the way we do it in our lives with our spiritual gifts, with relationships. That's a, another huge one. You've been hurt in relationships. You've been hurt, had church hurt, and you don't even want to go to church anymore and connect with people. You're like, I've been hurt by people. I get it. I understand. I'm a little bit cautious with people myself. <laughs> and I want to, and I need to grow in love for people. And so, you know, just be more gracious and loving towards people. And in order to do that, we got to exercise our faith and we got to exercise our love muscles. That means we got to get in there and we got to fall and we got to get hurt and we got to mess up. And the real, the real people who are walking with Jesus by faith are not afraid of the messiness of life and the, the pain. We cannot fear pain. <laughs> I pray in the mighty name of Jesus for everybody's health. If there's anybody who needs health, because I'm saying that, uh, pr pray for healing. Put in the comments, I'm going to pray for your healing this morning. We can all agree with each other. Let's agree with each other that uh, my leg is completely and totally restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Anybody else have a specific physical healing? And if you're on YouTube later, go ahead and put it in the comments and I will pray for it when I see it. You guys, let me know if there's some physical healings. I have, um, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, I pray for Susan's mouth sores to be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Um, Susan, do you eat much sugar? Because I know sometimes I get sores in my mouth when I eat a lot of sugar. 
just out of curiosity. You don't have to answer that, but Lord God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, if there's something physical in our body that we could do differently to receive our healing, give us the grace and the power to do it differently. But I pray in the mighty name of Jesus for miracle healing for sores in Susan's mouth. I pray, Lord, that you would touch her by your spirit and bring healing in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we got somebody else who has uh, um, bleeding uh, and blood's not flowing back into your heart right now. I pray healing in your heart, a healing in your legs. Touch her by the power of the Spirit of God, the, the blood of Jesus, and bring healing to her heart, healing to her circulation, healing to her legs. I pray for um, hip and gout in his foot and for Glenn in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, by your spirit, we gather in faith and we touch and agree. And you said, if any two gather and touch and agree and believe, it will be done for them. And so we were standing on your word, God, not in our own perfection, but in your power. We're praying for this healing in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Neck and headaches being touched and healed. Actually, my neck was super tight and I had a really bad headache until I got on here and the Spirit of God fell. And so we know there's healing by the Spirit. There is healing in the anointing. And we pray that the anointing and the power of God come and touch and heal all neck pain, back pain, and headaches in the mighty name of Jesus. I know a lot of people, me included, are struggling with sinus issues. And this was something that came on me as an adult that I didn't have as a child. So I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, if you're dealing with sinuses, just put your hand wherever you're hurting, wherever you he need healing. And I just pray healing and deliverance from allergies, seasonal allergies in Jesus' name. Lord God, you made the earth and everything in it and you have placed us in the earth. And we know that in, in before the fall that we weren't allergic to the earth. And so we pray, God, that you would restore us to our form that you created us before the fall of man and restore to us um, without the allergies. In Jesus' name, I pray for um, Wendy that she would not be nervous going in for a colonoscopy, that she would have peace, unspeakable and full of glory, that you would steady the doctor's hand and that would be as seamless and painless as possible in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. More people with leg problems, Lord God. I pray in Jesus' name, healing, touch our legs, heal our entire body from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. I pray that it would function, that it would come into alignment, that all trauma and all past wounds and trauma wounds and damage be restored. Trauma, leave our bodies in Jesus' name. Sickness, leave our bodies in Jesus' name. Joints, operate properly in Jesus' name. Ligaments and bones and muscles and sinews and blood and nerves, nervous systems. Touch us in the mighty name of Jesus and restore our health, God. Restore our health, God, and help us to take excellent care of our bodies with the food that we eat, with the drinks that we drink, with the way that we move our bodies. Lord God, help us to steward well what you have given us. I pray that we would live healthy, long lives in the earth and that there would be a healing flow and a healing anointing over the body of Christ and that we would be healed in our soul, that we would be healed in our finances and our relationships and our bodies, and that we would take that healing that is flowing in us and to us to flow through us to the world around us and that we would show others the power of God to bring healing, the power of God to bring freedom from debt, the power of God to bring abundant life, the power of God. I pray, Lord, that we would not be the ones that we would be so latched to you, so attached to you, feeding off your body, drinking your blood, being having a part of you, and you being living through us, Lord God, that we would not come into the world with our need, that we would be bearers of goodness, bearers of blessing, that we would be heavenly distributors, that we would stop saying, words out of our mouth that condemn us, words out of our mouth that condemn others, that we would stop speaking death, that we would stop speaking poverty, that we would stop speaking downturn and defeat, that we would stop complaining, that we would stop uh, cursing, 
judging, criticizing, Lord, that our mouths would become mouthpiece of heaven, that we would speak the very oracles of God, that we would recognize that we are kings and queens and priests unto our God, and that we would not use our mouth for the flesh and to, to, to speak forth what the enemy has in mind over our lives, over our bodies, Lord, that we would speak life, that we would trust in you with all of our heart and not lean on our understanding, that we would believe steadfastly that in a day something can change, in a day that our, our situation can be changed, can be shifted. And I pray for a divine shift in one day in the mighty name of Jesus. I see one day change in many people's lives. This, this, this week, this month, this year, there is major, major important days in our lives. There are days this year where things will change. This could be your turnaround day right now with the healing in your body. This could be the turnaround day right now in your finances. You could get the call that the, the, the doctor could say that it's over. Whatever it is you have been struggling, you, you could find out good news today. And there's always good news every single day. And the Lord is saying so much can change in a day. So much can change in a day. And Lord, we are trusting you. We are waiting on you. We bless your name. We worship you. We want to, to put our heart and heart towards you, our mind towards you, fix our mind on heaven and the things above and not on these earthly things, Lord God. And help us to stay hidden in you. Help us to stay in that secret sweet garden, that secret place in your heart and eternity, Lord God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, we would stay here and we would flow from this place and we would not allow ourselves to be agitated and allow ourselves to be confused. I pray against confusion. I pray, Lord, that we would not be confused, that we would not be under a fog of confusion. I pray against confusion that you are no longer confused. You have the mind of Christ. You are not walking by fear. You are not worried about tomorrow because the Bible says don't worry about tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow has enough trouble. Today has enough trouble of its own. You know, we have today's grace. God does not give us grace for problems that we haven't had yet. And so when we try to sit and think about how we're going to work out things if this happens or if that doesn't happen, there's no grace for it and it's going to make us miserable. So we're not going to try to do that. We will fix our eyes on the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Lord God, I pray that we would go forth like a power-packed, spirit-filled, joy-overflowing, grace-receiving um, information in our places and holy confidence that we would go out to the day and we would be a blessing everywhere we go. And I pray that you would give us the courage to to speak the name of Jesus, to share the plan of salvation, to meet the needs that we see as we go. I promise you, as we go forth, meeting the needs that we see that God brings before us. And if we see a need and God brings it before us and we don't think we can meet it, we can ask the Lord to use us to meet that need. I don't know about you, but when I start feeling like people are unjustly treating me or risk taken from my life and not sell back into my life and I start to feel myself get upset about it I stop and I mindfully say I sow humbly into this person's life without the expectation of a return and I am trusting you God to bring justice in my life through your own hand however you see fit whenever you see fit and I am not going to allow myself to and, and it's a, sometimes it's a mind thing. You have to really work it out in your head. I am not going to see myself as a weak, needy, clingy person who decides this is how this is how my need needs to be met. That's how my need needs to be met. I'm going to trust that the Lord is going to meet my needs. And I am going to think of myself. I think that as believers <clears throat> in the earth, we need to be thinking of ourselves is as the need meter and not always be saying, I can't afford that and I can't give and I don't make enough money to give. And, you know, I've been hurt in relationships before. I'm not going to, you know, do any pursuit in the relationships. I'm not going to, you know, sometimes you have to, you have to sow in many different relationships before you see which ones are going to sow back. And yeah, sure. 
I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the people in my closest circle, I want my closest friends to be sewing back into my life too. <laughs> so, yeah. So in everybody's life, bless everybody's life that God brings to you, but certainly pick your closest friends from those who are reciprocal in the relationship. But you can't always find that unless you're willing to, to give without receiving anything back in lots of relationships. And then sooner or later, God brings, you know, relationships with people who are reciprocal. And those are the best. But that's not everybody. And you can go ahead and count on that. <laughs> you can go ahead and believe it's going to happen. It's going to happen if you are a giver. People will use you. People will not appreciate you. And there will be plenty of people who take from you, complain about not what it is that you're giving or <laughs> the color of your hair. I've had some messages. People email me to tell me they don't like the color of my hair. I'm like... You know, so you follow me. You've never mentioned, never emailed me before in your life. You're going to email me and tell me you don't like the color of my hair. That is not okay. <laughs> I don't care if you like my hair. But anyway, so, you know, people, people are flawed and people are wounded. And we just got to understand that and just try to love them where they are and, and trust God to work it out. And he does. And we have a friend in Jesus. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he is always with us. And he is our best friend. He is so good. And even when you feel lonely and, and, and even when you need to take a minute and, and, and allow God to heal some wounds where you really did give and trust and a commit to people who you really thought felt the same and then it turned out they didn't. It's okay. It's okay to take a minute and you know, you get knocked off your feet, you get the wind knocked out of you in those types of relationships sometime and just, and get, you got to talk to yourself and say, I'm sowing this in to you, Lord, in faith that you know how to, to make this right. And it probably won't happen through this person, but you're going to bring future relationships that are going to not hurt me like this. <laughs> and I'm going to trust you, Lord. And we just trust you with all of our heart, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for divine appointments, divine connections, divine provision in all of our lives, divine healing. In the mighty name of Jesus, kingdom marriages, kingdom friendships, kingdom ministries, kingdom partnerships. Lord, help us not just to ask for these things for ourselves, but ask who, how, where, when you can use us to be this in the lives of other people, too. I mean, you've heard the little saying, you know, the Bible says he who wants friends, this is a Proverbs, must show himself friendly. A lot of you don't have friends because you're not friendly. <laughs> and then turn people, you know, you got to be a, you got to offer your friendship and you'll get more friends. So I love you guys and I will talk to you ladies. Share this, tag some people if you are on YouTube, follow me. I'm going to plug my business again because we're having a huge flash sale. It was so big that the website was jammed last night because we're giving away a free box of Go, which is an amazing product. It brings mental clarity, physical energy, clean. It's got um, all kinds of vitamins and minerals and energy bearing herbs and stuff. I don't know what, what all's in it, but I love it so much. I actually have sent some to my customers just as a sample. And you get a free box of that with the purchase of any bundle that has trim. And I've talked about trim. I've showed you guys trim. It has um, biocell liquid collagen in it, fat shrinking, um, uh, muscle building pudding. It tastes like pudding. It's really good. I take a, tea, a tablespoon every morning. And it's so it's, it's kind of like weight loss and for your skin. And there's lots of bundles. Message me if you want a coupon code. I, I can give you uh, $10 uh, off for your first purchase. And then you get another $10 off this bundle. And then you get a free box of Go, which is $46. And it is a flash sale. You need to do it today. I think it lasts through tomorrow at maybe 5. Or while supplies last, you need to do it today. Message me. Support Christian Business if, if you are looking for uh, skin care. Um, household cleaning stuff, um, you know, personal products like toothpaste and shampoo, all wonderful stuff. I'll give you a link to my store. You can look around. But you want to get on, get in on this bundle deal. And you can go to my website if you want one-on-one -on -one counseling. You can sign up for that there. You can partner with this ministry. We appreciate your partnerships. I'm going to be honest. It, the Facebook is 70. I only am 25% going on my Facebook. So, we are way below budget this month. 
<laughs> way below budget for the ministry and um there are costs involved with ministry so i appreciate you guys if the lord prompts you to give um I'm just telling you what the needs are now, and you can do what the Lord prompts you to do or not. I bless you, and I will see you soon.